It's indeed a pleasure to be with you, both present in your sanctuary and for those of you worshiping online. It's been a while since I've been in this sanctuary. I'm Reverend Terry Hubbard. Most of you, I hope, have seen the little video that was up earlier in the week. But it is indeed a blessing. I've been familiar with this sanctuary for 10 years and for as long as Mike and I have lived in Las Vegas, and it is wonderful to see familiar faces and lots of new faces. And so I appreciate uh, your presence in my life this morning and invite you now to all just pray with me. Oh God, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be pleasing and acceptable to you this day and always. Amen. I'm going to invite you to think back to your very first dance. Perhaps it was middle school or junior high. You know, one of those strange, awkward times in life. Boys and girls don't quite know how to relate real well at that time. At least my experience was that junior high, middle school time, and, and I can remember very clearly the space, the semi-dark room, the light, the disco light, as we used to call them, singing from the, swinging from the ceiling in the gymnasium in my school. Most of the boys were lined up along a wall, acting up, kind of punching each other. What are we all going to do here? Those dares, oh, I dare you, go dance with her. And the girls kind of huddled in groups. In your own mind, think of that time, the very first dance. And then I want you to think about the time you perhaps were taught ethnic dances in a physical education class. Mine was in high school. For several years, I think, we were taught dances from all over the world. At this time, there wasn't anybody that was allowed not to participate because the gym teacher wouldn't allow that at all, right? Everyone had to get in the center at one point or another, get a partner at one point or another, and dance. Pentecost is a participatory event, and it's ongoing in our lives. It's one of those things that we can't sit on the sideline for. So early in our ministry, Mike and I served a church in Ogden, Utah. And in that church, we had a, a small gathering of families from Nigeria. I believe Emily is still worshiping here, Emily and Atia, if if she is, uh, she's a beloved member of our congregation way back when. This was in the mid-90s, I think. Every once in a while, our Nigerian friends would, hmm, I would say, want to place the spirit in our lives. They were amazing dancers and singers, these families, and every once in a while in worship, they, they would come and prepare ahead of time and say, we want to teach the congregation this song or something like that. It was a long time ago. It's hard to remember. But I will tell you this. When they invited the congregation to participate in their singing and dancing, even the most stoic of our folks could not help but move. They caught the spirit of love in that participatory event. This is what Pentecost does. Pentecost calls us in, fills our body, and wants us to participate. The Ezekiel text that I shared with you, the very beginning of it, says this from the New Revised Standard <clears throat> Version. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord. As I was reading and preparing, I looked up several different versions of this text. And the one that caught me the most comes from Eugene Peterson's 
the message. And this is how it begins. God grabbed me. Now that's a lot different, right? The hand of the Lord came upon me. There's nothing wrong with these words, no. But those words, God grabbed me, that says something, right? What do you do when somebody grabs you? Most of us are going to step back. But we know something is happening. God grabbed me. God grabs you. Think of a time now when God has grabbed your heart, grabbed your life. For most of you, I'm sure that has happened several times, if not many. Offering you new opportunities to share the love in your heart with others in new ways, perhaps to participate in a mission or teach a class, or just go talk to a neighbor. God still grabs us and invites us into new life. I am reminded in this text and in this series about dancing, the whole notion of shoes and holy ground. Sanctuaries for me have always been a call to renew my connection with that which is holy, not that all the planet doesn't have holy places. But there's something about sanctuaries that often cause me to take off my shoes. Just like Moses did with the burning bush. Holy ground. God grabbing us causes us to act in a different way. I don't know about you, I do know some of you have special dancing shoes. Perhaps you can see mine, although I cannot wear them. Red sneakers, not red heels, sorry, <laughs> at this time in my life. But either with bare feet or special dancing shoes, this text and the Acts 2 text causes us to move. Now, not tomorrow, not oh, after XYZ event happens, but now. Pentecost has been called the birthday of the church, which is fine. We could have a party, we could have balloons. But more so, and especially for the church now, I think Pentecost is an awakening. Like those bones in the desert with Ezekiel, they came back to life. They were reawakened to a new opportunity to participate in the world. Pentecost is a time of refinement, the fire turning something including you, into something new. We are a people of the light. That's why fire, a flame, is important to us. Viktor Frankl, the survivor of the Holocaust, says that what is to give light is to endure burning. Now, that sounds rather harsh, but when flames come, they change things. If you burn a log in the fire, it's changed. Think of all the forest fires or home fires or just candles, the real ones, Megan. <laughs> they are changed to hold the light. We have to endure some of that change. Endure the burning. What does that mean for us? Ezekiel told those dry bones, with God's help, 
Don't be dead. Don't be a dead church is the message of Pentecost. Don't be a dead church. The Spirit is breathing life into the whole of the world, to all creation. There are no wallflowers when it comes to the movement of the Spirit. All are invited to the dance. The text in Ezekiel says that the people had no hope. But God says that is not so. We sometimes think that ourselves right now, don't we? That there is no hope. We keep seeing pain and suffering and burning and tragedy in our own country, in our own schools, and certainly in the world. How will we take the embodiment, spirit coming in to you, how will we take that embodiment and have it, have it activate our senses to be followers of Jesus is a participatory sport. It's not entertainment. It's not like watching Dancing with the Stars on TV. It's not like going to a show down on the strip. It means you actively do something. No matter your time or place in life, you may be thinking, oh, thanks God, but I already did my thing. No. There is never a time for the follower of Jesus to sit on the sidelines because the Spirit causes us to move. What do we do when God grabs us? It's a quote I ran across the other day. We can't always choose the music in life or the music life plays for us, but we can choose how we dance to it. As the Spirit moves your heart, let your life be transformed. Let your life be changed. God's grabbing you today to be reassembled. The tongues of fire are present. Allow your heart to be awakened with the energy of the Spirit. All are connected, and yes, in this world of sadness and grief and turmoil, that Spirit is guiding us. Listen to the stories around you and see how the invitation comes. The Spirit comes and changes you, awakens you. The wind is blowing the Spirit is speaking. Let go of the dead, the destruction, the unnecessary stuff in life, and remember the dry bones. God says in that text that the people are placed on the land that they know. This is true for us as well. The Spirit is in your body. This is a land you know so you can safely move with God into participation. The people said our hope is lost. The Spirit says, no, it is not. So let us go forth from this day into a world of love and hope and promise, and the fires of God, the fires of spirit to transform a world, even your little corner of it, that needs to be changed. May it be so, and may you be blessed as you move with that flaming spirit. Amen.